I'd like to call the I'd like to call the July 11th, 2023, City of Morrow Council meeting to order. If you'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence, and we keep our favorite employee, Mr. Baum, in your prayers as he recovers at the hospital. Understanding 
why is that? Does it have to, to help a better understanding why that information is not valuable to public to be recorded in the public record? Are you willing to make a motion, Mr. I'm waiting for the uh, record keeper to give us an explanation or give me an the explanation. The record keeper is not required to give you a response at this particular point. You have the ability to have the floor, you have the ability to make a comment, you have the ability to make an amendment if the city council so chooses to accept that amendment. Okay. Do you wish to make a motion? Yes. I will make the amend motion to. This is so. Um, I do, I'm making an amend motion to have the first amend motion, the second amend motion, the third and the fourth amend motion in the meeting minutes for the regular meeting on June 27, 2023, to record exactly how the motion were verbally caught, especially the substance of verbatim language being caught to add into the minute minute. Very good, sir. Hearing none, motion fails. Go back to the original motion. I would like to make the second of my motion. So, the amend motion is to and to, to record the amend motion after the original ordinance number 2023-04. The recording is missing the accident of adjustment of the budget 2024 after we evaluate the actual number 24. It's not recorded, and I would like to have it add um, to the meeting minute. Do you second? Okay, now the motion fails. Go back to the original motion. I'm done, Mr. Chair. I'm done, thank you. Okay. Motion probably first, probably second. All those in favor say aye. Ms. Knight? Aye. Ms. Steele? Aye. Mr. Park? Aye. Ms. Chair? May the meeting minutes and not recorded the amend motion correctly and the from the motion amend motion number one to number four and the amend motion after the original ordinance 2023-04 missing the recording on, on accent of the adjustment of budget 24 after evaluating the actual number 23. Point out the motion carries. Proclamations. This is really good. Yeah. I did. Yeah. There was a young lady by the name of N.D. Wynn. C.K. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. But we well, we're going to recognize her. She graduated from our high school, was attending the University of Pennsylvania and served as the Walking in Authority Team Council 22-23 president. City of Mar, Georgia, a proclamation recognizing Heart of Service Lionel Bay. 
whereas the definition of a volunteer is an individual who freely offers to take part, and the definition of service is the action of helping or doing work for someone. Whereas occasionally a person comes along with such a heart for service, who embodies selflessness and generosity, who gives so freely of their time, effort, energy, and support, they become synonymous with the word volunteer. And whereas the city of Warren is fortunate enough to have such one person among those who call it our home, Ms. Mata LeVay, and whereas 37 years of service to our country, countless hours of community service and city events, as emergency response force support, addressing traffic control needs, directing traffic as an blood drives, cultural events, voter registration, job fairs, health fairs, and more that cannot be made. Uh, Lana LeVay currently serves the chairman of the Morrow's Urban Redevelopment Agency, where she is working to move Morrow in the right direction for progressive decisions upon development and infrastructure. And whereas Lana LeVay cares deeply about the city of Morrow, her neighbors and her community, and Morrow City staff, giving her the time and her care she has seen as a mother to all of our staff. Therefore, I, John Lake, will bear the city of Morrow join with other members of the community in recognizing Lana LeVay and showing her appreciation. Thank you. And, and just right quick, uh, we were also giving her a $50 gift card. No, you aren't. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we are You know, um, it was just, just really marvelous. And the, oh, thank you, baby. And it's just wonderful that when you can come out and do something and see so many people enjoy themselves. So that's really giving from the heart back to the city and you know to see our children because I, I see myself as you know a kid when we didn't have stuff like this but we as a city and with good leadership great leadership thank you thank you everybody and me i'm going to tell you that that guy he worked i even got a picture of him as i was leaving late at night <laughs> hooking up trees Colored. i'm going to tell you y'all worked really great so thank you for everybody that did so much and my our little volunteers right here, they did a great job. So thank you. Miss Alma Floyd, can you please come up? I'm making sure there's a tip over your car. Good to see you. You look a lot more comfortable today. <laughs> there, there's a little side story. The, uh, she was concerned about a ladder that had been uh, left out there. Um, and it's a, it was a city ladder. Um, so she would already went all the way home. It dawned on her. And she drove all the way back to make sure that it was secured and, and that the city didn't lose um, a, a priceless area. I did not belong to the city that belongs to where trade, you know. But and but the ladder's like fifteen feet, <laughs> yeah. and she is not. So even if she could, she would not have been able to carry. We're lucky that he was there. It was all good though. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, Mayor of the City of Moore, for your proclamation, recognition, of service, on the floor. The definition of volunteers an individual who freely offers to take part in the definition of service is action and helping and doing work for others. Occasionally, a person comes along who has such a heart for service, who embodies selflessness and generosity, who gives so freely of their time, effort, and energy and support that they become synonymous with the word volunteer. Whereas the city of Mar is fortunate enough to have one such person at home called Mar Home, Miss Alma Floyd. Alma has worked for Mar Middle School for 16 years without hesitation and tiredness, assists the city of Mar with community events such as the Easter egg hunt, collection food for military families on Thanksgiving, and many more. Alma Floyd is seen always around Lana LeBay. And they can be described as a Batman and a Robin duo. Good. And much more caring and, and irreplaceable. Alma Floyd selflessly and with her generosity, kindness, give back to her community that she needs to care for. The Fry Tell and Mayor of the City of Mar join with all our members of the community and recognize Ms. Alma Floyd for showing her appreciation.
but <laughs> or maybe and, uh, I, I don't know what to say. But anyways, thank you everybody. <laughs> Uh, at this time, um, our event coordinator, Trey Nguyen, is going to present, with, along with the mayor, the awards to the volunteers of this event that we have. So um, anyway, he went to court with them the next day, and 
he fought this thing up and, and the council graciously provided some counsel for them in the form of an attorney. And the good news to the story is, I don't know what the name say. The couple has not lost their home. They are. Um, to take the opportunity to recognize Mayor Lample with this proclamation, and I will read it. By the Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Morrow, Georgia, a proclamation recognizing Mayor John Lample. Whereas the Mayor did selflessly with empathy pursue a resolution to longtime citizens and residents of the City of Morrow, and whereas Otis and Dorothy Mack Wilson have resided in the City of Morrow for over two decades, are retired after working all their lives and are now both in their 80s and looking forward to living out their lives in their biggest investment, their home. And whereas Dorothy May is suffering from the onset of dementia and Otis suffers serious health problems, and whereas the Wilsons had taken a home equity loan a decade ago and due to fraudulent activity missed several payments of value under $11,110, the bank had completed a non-judicial foreclosure. The home had been auctioned on the courthouse steps and the Wilsons were facing a dispossessory hearing. And whereas John Lample took it upon himself to champion a seemingly hopeless cause, attending court hearings with the Wilsons was instrumental in securing legal representation for them, researched for days, made numerous calls, contacted federal and state lawmakers, checked on them daily and ensured they ensured they attended critical meetings and hearings. And whereas on Friday, June 30th, 2023, the hand of God was apparent in a miraculous and unforeseen turn of events, the company who had purchased the Wilson's home signed it over to them. They now owned their home with no mortgage and a right of survivorship with the deed being recorded at the Clayton County Courthouse. And now, therefore, I, Renee Knight, Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Morrow, join with all members of the community in recognizing Mayor John Lample for his optimism, selfless dedication, and dogged determination in pursuit of returning the Wilsons to their family home. Good job.
Resolution 2306, uh, Resolution 2 of the City of Mark Pisco, and the Position Allocation Chart, we had that before you. Uh, do I hear motion to approve? So moved. Do I hear second? Second. Motion properly seconded. All those in favor say aye. Ms. Lane? Aye. Ms. Dean? Aye. Mr. Kwok? Aye. Ms. Trent? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, we have one item in executive session. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Do I hear second? Second. Motion properly seconded. All those in favor say aye. Ms. Lane? Aye. Mr. Kwok? Aye. Ms. Dean? Aye. Ms. Trent? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, comments from the general citizen. Good job, Mayor. This one took a lot of work. This, this was cool stuff. There, there's, there's a story behind there, everything from Congressman Scott's office to, I won't mention the bank, because it was the right thing in his office. And you certainly, you know, if, if, if you're playing into a higher thing, it was. I, I want to, for those that did not come out uh, Saturday and Sunday, uh, you missed an awesome time. It was fabulous. The work, me, even though we moved some tables around that we didn't have to <laughs> we stepped over a few things, but it's a growing process. And we learned from that, that communication is, is the best thing going for you that you go to the people that are working it, and when you go to them, then things can be done. You know, don't ever get that third or fourth person around to come in underneath the wire. Yeah. So communication, and, and we just had an awesome time. V, I'm gonna tell you, even though he isn't here, uh, he needs to get through. He's probably listening in. Yeah, he needs to get through for somewhere. Critiquing the sound system or something. Yeah, he's great. Y'all did a fabulous job, you know, and, and they worked so hard putting everything together. And everybody really, from the police department, the fire department, no injuries, you know, we were expecting with the heat, the heat index. And it was, it was just fabulous. So, thank you, Megan. <laughs> I, I just like to add, uh, pick back off of what Lana had stated. Uh, we had a report last night at the neighborhood watch meeting from uh, Major Woody, and he was just elated to share with us about no injuries of all. Of, I think it was over five thousand people that came into our that flooded our city in that two day span with. Um, all of the fun activities from the 4th of July and also for the night market, that says a lot in itself is that the people that did work the event in helping plan all of these things, that they did communicate, they did make things happen, they kept us safe, everybody had a great time, people are still talking about it, and that Morrow truly is the place that they want to be. And I want to personally thank you, Mayor, for making room for the Morrow Women's Civic Club um uh at your spot there at the table in the front of um the event that we had for the night market um the ladies again we, we have a lot of elders in our group and it was extremely hot that day but mayor lampo made it made it his business to ensure that we had tintage that we had a space and that we were able to go uh, and, um, go through and make things happen for our group. We raised over uh, $500 on selling selling those light up balloons. So I just want to personally say thank you so much for looking out for us and not just for us, but for the city as a whole. So thank you all. Yes. from the council, Ms. Tran. Well, thank you uh, for all the staff and volunteer and all the sponsor that have made our event became a successful event. And obviously, every event that we have uh, repeating getting grow bigger and bigger. And I hope the community uh, we will provide the community an enjoyable e uh, events every time that we do. Again, thank you, everyone, uh, including the attendees. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, again, thank you to all the city hall staff for everything that you all do. We appreciate the heart that you all have for the city. Um, 
demonstrated time and time again with your dedication. And uh, just to you, John Lample. We appreciate you. We, we appreciate you. We're proud of you, John. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Clark. I mean, I, I, you know, it's always a great event, and uh, I, I sit back and uh, look at uh, the people, enjoy themselves, you know, anybody, black, white, Indian, Asian, anybody have a piece, so do something to enjoy in there, and uh, that's truthfully the enjoy moment for me to, to, to see what that happening. And being say that uh, every single event that we come to enjoy, I'm speaking as a citizen of Moro, um, I want to point out that uh, even though city employees, they, uh, they get paid by hour or whatever it is, but probably not by choice, sometimes not by choice, they have to go out there and They go on out from early morning to late, and uh, public work people have to go around and pick up dirty trash and every trash, you know. You know, I have been out there and I've been watching them, and, and they work in long hours and all that. And I want to say, from the bottom of my heart, and I want to appreciate what they do for, for those, uh, for our community. To all that have a great event, enjoy. And another thing that I, um, I want to appreciate uh, uh, Mr. Mayor for, uh, I wasn't here, but uh, he, uh, I was calling a meeting, he pointed out and mentioned about the, uh, the other couple that did have in the I appreciate him for. Stepping up and you know, even though at the time there wasn't much help that we think we can do, but it did it, 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 it end up well. And uh, my father was still great, uh, you know, together we, uh, we can do, we, we can, we can do things uh, meaningful to our own community. I appreciate that. Thank you. Christine. Mayor, if I may, I'd like to make a comment as a citizen sure. on the floor. Also, 
I would like to make a comment on a motion that an elected official, Councilwoman Tran, made a few weeks ago. And that motion was to get, to try and get a change on the voting ballot, which was to include the Vietnamese language. And with an afterthought, she included Spanish in that motion. That motion failed. On the July 2nd, at the International Night Market event that the city held, Councilwoman Tran, along with several others, were at that event displaying a flyer. That flyer was in only one language, and that was Vietnamese. The only individuals that could read that flyer were Vietnamese. So they continued to engage and solicit signatures for that petition of getting a vote on the ballot to include Vietnamese. This councilwoman train was disturbing to me because you as an immigrant American, you took an oath of citizenship that was read and given to you in English. That language you swore an allegiance to, to become an American citizen. You also took an oath to be an elected official right here in this chamber. You swore and took an oath of allegiance to America in English. As a citizen, as an elected official, you should be encouraging citizens to learn to speak, read, and write the language in which they are citizens of this country. But instead, you wanted to get a petition signed to include another country's language on the American voting ballot. I'd like to let you know that that offended me highly as a woman of color who's lived in this country for 72 years, who has had to march, stand in lines of protest to get the right to vote. And I do it in honor of people who did not have the opportunity or the right to vote. And I'd like you to know that I feel as a citizen of this city and as a fellow council member, that you do not deserve to sit on that dice as an elected official. You have failed in your oath of office. You have failed as a citizen of this country. You disregarded and you dishonored those oaths that you took as an American citizen. I would like to say that is un-American and inexcusable. Shame on you, Van Train. Thank you. Well, Mr. Mayor, okay. um, uh, that's the healthy cause. It, uh, it's come directly to me, I and I would like to have a few uh, okay. comments.
it didn't rain until like later, you know, then it wasn't tremendously terrible. You know, so, so the city performed well. And that's what this is all about. Um, so, so we appreciate that and, and all of those who took part in it. Um, There's a lot of work. And we're getting better. Each time we do this, and, and as your peers are now starting to recognize you, is you've got some pretty cool stuff going on. There's a number of other things that capital improvement type programs. If you have any chance to see, uh, they started putting up the, uh, the chain link fence around the Sears uh, today. Most of that's going to be some internal stuff that's going to get taken out before they start to demo part of that building. So there you have your $100 million development and you have an 8,000 seat arena. So by the time you know, 24 months passes, some of the same things you saw this weekend will be happening on a regular basis in just good old fashioned water building. So uh, that is by itself phenomenal. And then remember this thing opens debt for the school system, doesn't owe anything on it. Uh, a lot of places like the GCIC, you know, they've got a lot of bond and debtedness to it. Uh, you don't have that. Right? Um, so that's going to work for us. And there'll be all kinds of acts that will come out there and play. So hats off to the superintendent schools, the, the school board themselves, the county commissioners, and everybody that made that happen. Um, and, uh, the, the proclamation was a little bit of a surprise to me. Um, that, that was a good fun. Um, you know, sometimes you, you have to go in and you know you, you try to hold it together. Um, the, the award the, the, this week, but the people that were behind it were really the heroes there. Um, and, and sometimes when you come in, you know you have to know that you know, this, this isn't an easy job. Right? And most of the people that are involved with some of these sections of the legal aid, they, they fight this battle uphill both ways, and they rarely win. You know, so to be able to not only have uh, an elderly couple receive their property back. But to have it donated to them free and clear. Right? There is no debt on this property. Um, you know, but our job isn't done. One of the things that you looked at while we were reaching this conclusion is, is, is how do we help senior citizens? You know, not, not just in statement, but in fact. You know? And invariably when you when you talk about, you know, say Joe, somebody brings up somebody else in the city who has not necessarily the same need, but there is a need. And you go, well, that was, that was a little bit more challenging, or you say a little bit more challenging, it's different. Um, maybe that person really is not going to appreciate your help. They need your help, but they have, you know, post traumatic stresses or, or a number of other things tragically have happened in their life, but they need the help just the same. So you're, you're seeing a series of actions that are, are starting to take place behind the scenes to reconstitute some of the things that the city always had the ability to do, but to put them back in place. To put the right people in the programs with the support of your city council and those people in this audience um, to go and find those others, right? And we know there's going to be a handful. We know there will probably be more needs than there are opportunities for us to be able to solve. We can't solve everything, but we've at least identified three other issues that I think it would be fair to say anybody sitting in this room would say, "Yeah, that's that's not going on." Um, and what are we going to do about it? You know, so. And, you know, some things are sometimes brought to you, not necessarily what you see, but what is the entirety of it. And then what happens in the long term, right? What are we going to do tomorrow? What are we going to do the next day? Um, and, and we're going to rely on you know, not other members of this council, but a lot of the folks in this audience and a number of people that aren't here. You know, as a community, you know, just let them know we're coming. You know, and we should, right? These are, these are the absolute facts. Um, so, on, on one hand, we have to have a great appreciation for those that stepped up and did the right thing, right? Not because you had to, but because it was the right thing. Um, and there's a couple others that some people in the room know they are. Um, you know, they're, 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 we're, we're, we're going to finish where we started. Um, so, I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then I'm going to end this council meeting because there's very little reason for us to continue this debate. <laughs>